So Blackburn Rovers' shambolic form continued tonight as we lost to Birmingham on their own turf. Which leads me on to this. Is it time for Rovers and Mowbray to part ways? We'll talk about that and much more next. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time we're picking apart Blackburn Rovers' latest match. That was the defeat up against Birmingham at St. Andrews. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscriber to get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related. Championship related. Whoa, football related. We're all here. Nowarowski. That's right. Now, before we get into the into the nitty gritty, and it is a little bit of shitty gritty. Uh, I just want to let you know that I have a Patreon page out there, boys and girls. It is screaming out for your attention. Uh, I'm trying to push this channel onto another level, folks. Preferably in the championship still, but but if you, if we can't pull our finger out anyway, we could be back in League One, and that would make things even harder. But anyway, if you are looking to support the channel in another way, uh, this is the old, this is the avenue to explore. There are three tiers of support which you could help me strangely from one dollar a month all the way through to ten bucks a month one dollar is actually less than a cup of coffee big time it's actually you can get probably uh by six dollars a month for a cup of coffee over here but anyway if you are interested in becoming a patreon check out the link in the old description down below now let's get into the thick of things folks i talk about it the shambles that was this one nil performance uh loss to Birmingham at St. Andrews uh where 18,561 fans were in attendance to watch this game so we, I've got I've got quite a lot to talk about, and I don't really want to dwell on a lot of things, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the stuff anyway. Let's just break about the the, the performance. Colin with the goal was his name Maxwell Colin or Maxim Colin, a defender, right back, uh, wide open, completely wide open, heads home, uh, the the one and only goal. And to be honest with you, Birmingham, I'm not saying they played amazing, um, but they just they just did the bits. They just they just turned up business like performance. It wasn't no, they're not going to be talking about this in five years time. Remember that performance. Against uh, Rovers at St Andrews when we won one 0 No, people will forget this result, especially Birmingham fans, pretty quick. Rovers on the flip side, it's just another one. It's just another string or another feather on a camel's back. And one of these, it could be Saturday. That's actually going to break that poor camel's back because this was absolutely the most dire performance I've seen by Rovers. We've got so much attacking potential on this team in this eleven. Well, I'll take a look at the eleven in just a minute. You know, we're wasting a lot of this time, and 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 that brings. I got so much to talk about. This 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 is this must be absolute torture for Bradley Dak. He has got immense talent, and he was carrying the rest of his squad here today. You know, he can't do this. We cannot do this to the poor lad. He's got he's got aspirations to play at the highest level. He's supposed to be sticking around with us and trying to give us a shot to play at the highest level. And if he turns out like this, dog shit like this, week in, week out, he's going to be gone in January. I tell you that now, he'll be gone in flipping January. Because he he's not getting any younger. He's not that young anyway. So he needs to be playing at a, high, a better quality. And today... If this is what we're going to have to turn out week in, week out, he's definitely going to be off. Um, I'll, I'll get into the, the the what my true gut feeling is about all this in a minute. But let's just take a look at the stats and all that kind of good stuff. 13 shots for Rovers, believe it or not. I, I, I honestly couldn't couldn't tell you where. Uh, there are 12 shots for Birmingham. Uh, we actually did edge it on possession-wise, just over 50%, 49.8% uh, for Birmingham. Uh, they had better successes with the passes. 71% of all the passes reached their intended target. 68 for us. Uh, we had more dribbles compared to them. Uh, they won the aerial duels which was expected uh 20, 20 tackles to their 14 they have more corners as well uh yeah the one and only goal was scored when was it when did it get put in the back of the net i can't see 31st minute um this is the starting lineup so let's take a look at them for you a uh, camp between Sticks, Pedersen, Dean, Roberts and Cole in the goal scorer. Villiaba on the left-hand side. Davis, uh, young Bellerman was in there, young 16-year-old. Absolutely uh, held his own there. And I was listening to the commentators. Yep, he's off to school tomorrow. Back to school. We got owned. We got schooled by a schoolboy today. Crowley on the right-hand side. Very, very creative as well. Very, very good. Astute signing, especially at this level. Lucas Chikagowitz up top. And Madamati up there supporting him as well. Just they just they just turned up, showed up. You know they didn't they didn't have to they didn't have to show off their skills. Even though some of them did, some of the players like uh, Magoma was very very much of a handful in the second half. Um, but yep, yeah, a stoop solid Pedersen was probably my man of the match. If if I have to give it to somebody, uh, especially for a Birmingham point of view, he ripped us apart. A left back ripping us apart, unbelievable. Let's take a look at the Rovers line. This is it, folks. So we're going to start ripping these guys a new ones. Uh, Walton between the sticks. We have no other goalkeeper. It's all on him. Rumor has it we're paying him through the pissing nose. We're paying this guy big bucks. 
And he's been absolutely shit the past few games. He did start his, his, his tenure at Rovers. On, he's on loan, by the way. He's on loan. I'll get more. I'll dwell on that in a minute. Started his, his campaign with the Rovers pretty decent. He had, had four clean sheets within the first five or six games or something. So I was looking potential, but what's gone wrong with him? What has gone wrong? And his distribution, when we are losing the pissing game, is absolutely hair ripper. It's a hair ripper. I'm, we're losing the pissing game. He's taking a sweet ass time and then he opts for a long ball, which ultimately goes to the opposition. And then we're back to square one again. And we, we are looking at the clock. The clock is ticking. You're taking your sweet ass time. And then you turn out that. Yes, you're a bit of a... You, you are a decent uh, goalkeeper for the most part. But simple things like that really irks me. Especially when we've got electric players like Adam Armstrong, Joe Rothwell on at the time. Creative geniuses like that. Screaming out for the ball. You're taking your sweet ass time. We're on the clock. Are you, are you secretly a Birmingham City supporter or something like that? I have no idea. I'll, I'll give you my match rating about you in a minute, Walton. Uh, Bennett at left back. Why on earth? Why on earth do we opt for this? Really, I, I, I'm starting to get frustrated with the square square pegs, round holes uh, mentality, which has been with Rovers for maybe six, seven years. I have no idea why we keep opting to play players in uh, odd positions. And Bennett is a standout guy. Yes, I love his passion, and he probably deserves the captain's armband for the most part. But I don't. I, I don't think we should be playing him for the sake of playing him. You know, we should be playing our strongest eleven positionally wise and if Bennett so so, so cannot get himself in the team just like Nyambe couldn't get in the team a couple of weeks back then so be it Bennett and Frosty you have to sit out I think you're a good player I think you're a good versatile player to have on the on the on the bench to bring on but right now I don't see you know I don't see your strongest position being available maybe I think I've actually in, I've already prepped ahead about it for the Preston North End game I think I might have you in defensive midfield I think that's your better position you offer a bit more uh, you can track back and all that kind of thing. but why are we playing people out of position it does my boxing uh, Derek Williams was at le le uh, left side of uh, centre back Tosin and Barrio and uh, Ryan Nyambi at right back Travis Johnson Dak Armstrong Downing and Gallagher so the the, the writing was on the wall folks uh, straight out kick off when, when we saw the lineups no Lewis Holtby and that instantly hit me right in the belly I thought you know what there goes there goes the the, the recent um, up the chirpiness within the squad, within the camp, we had to rely on uh, everybody else, and there was just nothing. There was no pizzazz about this uh, this performance whatsoever. So let's give you my match ratings for you. Here we go. Walton had a stinker of a bit of a three, and again, mainly for his distribution. Bennett with a four. Uh, Williams with a four as well. He didn't do anything too bad. Uh, Tosan Abadario was was okay, and he did make some vital blocks. I'll give him a five. But where's the urgency, my man? Where's the energy? Where's the where's the desire to get forward? Why are you taking it so lethargically? You are a young guy with Manchester City on 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 your in your future, and you you just take Making it lackadaisical. Come on, boy. This is your chance to shine. Um, so get just stick a rocket up your ass and get ready and get moving forward. You know, we are losing a game. We've been on a shit run of form. This was a chance to get us back to winning ways. But a bit of a shitty performance. I'm going to give a Nyambe a six. I don't think he did uh, too much wrong. Uh, he didn't do too much right, but realistically, he didn't do... Uh, Travis was... was not the Travis of old, I'll tell you that now. I know he's a young lad and all that, but today's performance was a... I believe he was not. He was nervous because he, a yellow card would have mean he missed the game on Saturday, which I'm sure has been pumped through the, the speakers around Ewa Park or around Brockno or wherever it is, the, the training camps and all that, that they this is the big game on Saturday that they must perform. But you know what? I don't see anything but a Preston off-end win, I'll tell you that now. Uh, Johnson, oh my goodness, he was the... Sh uh, Pedersen was the star of the show uh, for uh, the best player on the pitch. This guy, I don't know what we was must be, you know, he looked like he's just filled his face with the KFC bucket or whatever it is. So lethargic, so slow, passing was awful. And I love the guy. I actually love the guy. I think he's he's, he's got the, the, the right tools. So what, he's my big boss man midfield. I was I was giving him a back massage and everything. I thought he was t tip top, going to be the, the star of the show for this season. But today was his worst performance in a long time. He should not be nowhere near starting lineup come Saturday. I'll give him on the bench, maybe. Uh, Dakaruni was the man that gave me a bit of hope. Um, <sighs> poor lad. I tell you what. You know, I, I'm... I want him to remain a rover for the rest of his career, but for, for the love of his, you know, his dreams and goals, it could be probably the best intention would be for us to sell him because because ultimately we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere if things don't change. We'll talk more about change in a minute. Uh, Armstrong was piss poor as well. Downing was not at his, at his best as well. He looked lethargic. His passing was off. And Gallagher, what the heck do we do with Gallagher for as well? Uh, let's take a look at the more stats for you here. Uh, they had more passes than us there. We had uh, more touches than them, 592. Uh, they had 588. Uh, down the bottom there, you can see where the, where the shots took place. Um, 
we actually had one shot on target. And you know that shot on target? Is that correct? Yeah, one shot on target. That one shot on target was a deflected shot from Elliot Bennett that took a, sh a, sh a ricochet off a, off a Birmingham player and had to be scuppered out of the way by a uh, uh, camp between sticks. That was it. The rest, all wide of the mark. All wide of the mark. That, for me, when you're spending £5 million on a striker at the championship level, should be hitting the fucking barn door on this one. Uh, ben Brereton, I know he's not here, but it's the same deal. We spent £7 million on him to get... Did we have, I think he got a goal. Maybe one, one, one goal, two goals last season. £12 million. Strikers. And we're getting one shot on target. That, for me is huge question of, of of lack of reason. Like, why, why did we need to buy... You know, we, yeah, we all love Gallagher. We all love Gallagher, and, and yeah, he's got a link with us and, and stuff like that. And I was happy when he arrived. I thought, you know what, yeah, this could be this could work out. But realistically, when we have not bought in a defender for years, and that is our major weakness, we go and spend £5 million on a striker when we could probably bring in two solid defenders at this level, maybe in three, if you go and explore the European market, the Poland leagues, the Dutch leagues, wherever it is, pick up a couple of Dan Crowleys while you're at it, because £5 million on a defender, and who knows what we're paying on wages? Who knows what we're paying on wages? So it's it's the mind boggles, the mind truly boggles what goes on with us at the moment. Ah, uh, this is the heat map, man, man, as you can see. Look at that. Look at that. Nowhere near. We're nowhere pissing near the attacking third for Birmingham. We were stuck in midfield, stuck in our own third. It was just what, the most miserable performance. I thought the second half against Wind uh, Huddersfield was miserable. And, uh, and you know, we, we, we were lucky to escape that with a point. But today, this was shambolic. If we were to get a point out of this game, I would have, I would have you know, I would have given it back to uh, Birmingham because we did not deserve it whatsoever. It was toothless. It was mine. Oh, it was dire. Danny Dyer. Now, if you are a Mowbray fan and you and you think it's just it's just one of those things, yeah, we'll get back to it anyways pretty soon. And the season's long, you know this kind of stuff. Then you probably should look, should look away now because I'm going to go into the social media uh, realm now and tell you a little look what the fans are thinking right now. And it's not pleasant. It is not pleasant. Let's take a look at it. Uh, Javadi BRFC. Or something along those lines. Whether it's tactics, players, or the manager, it needs sorting out. We're not good enough at all. No push or determination whatsoever. What is happening? Meanwhile, NYC Rovers, not saying it should happen, but the prospect of Tony getting sacked, replaced with Big Sam, who then gets us promoted, is a story worthy of Hollywood. Uh, that would not happen, but it would be amazing. Uh, Steve Atkinson said, absolutely shite. Had good feeling for this season, as we do have some technically good players and good youngsters. But it isn't happening. Turkish Delight, he was very, very vocal. Um, just check him out. Follow him on your Twitter. He's written an essay. But this is just a little snippet of some of his tweets. I have nothing but respect for Tony Mowbray and how he's carried himself and what he's done ever since he came in. It's all got a bit flat now, though. He's been backed in the transfer market, spending £8 million on Ben Barrett and £5 million on Sam Gallagher. It's indefensible. I honestly think he's taken us as far as he can. Stephen, uh, so this pathetic top six, nowhere near. Gone backwards from last season. Chris Brindle, we had one shot on target and was deflected to make it on target. We have gone stale at the moment, needs something to change quickly. If you read between the lines, you know where they're all going. Uh, Luke Radcliffe said this, first time I've said it, but Mowbray out. Appreciate him dragging us out of the third division, but if this carries on, we'll be back there again. Think he's losing the dressing room now too. Spunk 12 million, 12, two strikers that haven't scored as many as Williams has. Chris Hutton for me, and me as well, if it should come up. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jim Bertel said this, that was pathetic. This is becoming tiresome. They should be ashamed of that performance. We appear to be getting worse by the game. Hashtag never learn. Uh, Andy Peters, not that Andy Peters, but the Rovers fan, Andy Peters. Fingers crossed the bad performance to lull PNFC into a false sense of security on Saturday and we'll come away with a big victory. That's 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 that's, that's my optimism. That's what the sort of stuff I used to deal with. But I'm thinking we'll be lucky to, to, to lose only 3-0. Uh, Dom Sterling, hate to be the one of those people, but we look utterly dreadful and something needs to change because much longer and we are in a relegation battle. Uh, Karam or Karam or Kayante, uh, Chris Huden will sort us out. Unfortunately, can't see Tony Mowbray being sacked even with a loss at Deepdale this weekend. The Black Man Rovers rollercoaster continues. Lewis Heen said this, one of the worst performances I've ever seen from a Rovers team. Not one shot on target. Feel for the fans that travelled down there. Questions must be asked. Uh, Anthony Baldwin, utterly shite. First time I said this, but Mowbray out for me. Lifeless performance, just a few pointless passes, then hoofball to Graham, Gallagher or Armstrong. No plan, shoehorned out of position. Players like Bennett give Damian Johnson, Johnson the job to the end of the season. Uh, Adrian Spencer said this. He's got. He's actually made it twice on here. Lucky bugger. Uh, I've backed Tony since day one in both good and bad times, but ha has he maybe taken us as far as he can? Same excuses after poor performances. 
We needed a result today to get back to form, and we lost. I'm not looking forward to Preston on the weekend. Uh, Sam Gallagher, Christian Walton are by far the worst signings of the season, closely behind Mowbray's tactics and selection. That is Dave Fielding. Rovers chat. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you follow them as well. Absolutely don't want to say this, but I'm kind of leaning to say Mowbray going. Hear me out. We've had some great memories under Tony Mowbray, and that League One season was full of special memories that I'll never get. He also has a bit of a essay. Make sure you check that out. Danny Edwards got to field times up for Tony. Unfortunately, love him for everything he's done, but he can't take us any further. And Adrian Dispenser back in there again. Pathetic display. Didn't show any drive until the last 10 minutes. Looked clueless on the ball. Lost possession way too many times. Disappointing. And Chris Martin. I love Tony Murray as much as the next man. And he's done a lot for us, but he's surely a man under pressure. This run of form is very, very concerning. We can't continue like this. I have every faith that he'll turn it around, but he needs to change something and fast. And speaking of the Mowbray, what did he have to say after the result of the shambolic performance by his boys uh, against Birmingham? Yeah, very disappointing. I think um, at the first start performance particularly, I haven't seen that for over two years, I don't think, from our team. A team that I put out on the pitch for Blackburn Rovers, it's... Um, hugely disappointing uh, don't know where it came from didn't see it coming and um, thought they improved after the after half time but ultimately not enough and got nothing from a game that we probably deserve nothing from whatever was said at half time was said I thought the team improved second half and um, but ultimately we still had to you know we, we you've got to wait the goalkeeper more we had a few opportunities and Downing flashed one past Graham flashed one past Bennett shot deflected to keep a tipped over but we had some opportunities at least we looked like a team trying to score a goal and win a football match second half and uh, that was sadly lacking in the first I don't think it was about ball retention to be honest I'm not sure I don't think either team was particularly good with the ball for most of the match um, I'm not interested in that at times I think when you come to a place like Birmingham you have to stand up roll your sleeves up and get stuck in and and uh, show a bit of passion and emotion and uh, and I think that was something that we were a bit short of never mind how good or bad with the ball we were I don't think that's been a problem all year for us I think we are up in the top four or five teams in the league for ball possession I'm not interested in ball possession you have to find the way to score goals and win football matches and we fell a bit short tonight <laughs> Well, second half, you know, it's, it's it was an improvement, um, but got us no points, and, and ultimately, over 90 minutes, we weren't good enough, and you know, it was a frustrating night for us, and um, we have a chance on Saturday to try and put it right. Yeah, yeah, and they have been better for, as I said, I don't think we've dropped to that first half 45 level of performance for a long, long, long time. I think even in defeat, I don't mind losing football matches, but um, if you're going to lose, you have to lose a certain way, and, um, and we fell a bit short in a lot of areas for staff. Yeah, well, listen, it was a frustrating night for us, a disappointing night. We never got going, and, and I think ultimately um, we have to take that on the chin. Um, their goal, it was a good bit of quality. Crowley obviously flipped a good ball in the back stick, but... Um, you know, I'm more worried about us really and the concern that you know of, of this team making sure that we um, show more than we did for the first 45 tonight. As we've got some good footballers and, and that's the balance for this team, what we're striving for really, of, um, of having some heart and commitment and passion and but we have to balance that off with technicality and, and um, brave footballers and it's the fine balance. Sometimes if you put a team of, of footballers who are brave with the ball on the pitch you lose a little bit of aggression and tenacity and um, ultimately you'd like to fill your team with players who can all play with the ball and have a nasty streak in them them footballers are all playing in the Premier League and so it's very difficult to find the balance but um, yeah John Buckley we like John Buckley and John Buckley's going to be a really really good player because he's a very brave footballer wants to play and wants to run with the ball and wants to make things happen but um, he has to bide his time wait his chances and, um, and I'm sure he'll be a real good player in the future for us Meanwhile, one guy that was happy it was James from Birmingham City Fan TV. Here is his little bit of a rundown of the performance at St Andrews. So the final score is Birmingham City 1, Blackburn Rovers 0. It's a fantastic win for us. Um, the game wasn't a particularly great game. It wasn't a great watch. Neither team, I thought, particularly got going. Um, but obviously, three points is three points. Um, and I'm happy to take that one in the end. Um, as for you know Birmingham, I thought we did pretty well. Um, we weren't really troubled throughout the night, but we defended well when we had to. Um, we had some nice passages of play here and there, um, especially for the goal. I think it was well worked. We opened um, some pockets up well in front of the Blackburn defence, and um, 
it was a great ping to the back post and uh, unfortunately Colin the right back is there to to nod home um but other than that I think that the first half you know we largely dominated without creating too many you know clear cut chances um and I don't think Blackburn really kind of got out of first gear um, in the second half, I think that they, they, you know, you guys, Blackburn, came on a little bit stronger. I think that um, the substitution certainly helped bring in Graham on. I don't think Gallagher did poorly, but I don't think he did a lot, to be honest. Um, and I just don't think, you know, some of the standout players for you guys really turned up on the night. Dak, I don't think, um, while he picks up some good positions, didn't really do much on the ball. Um, Downing was a little bit quiet tonight. I expected more from him. So, you know, I think that obviously you guys will be disappointed. I know that you don't expect to win games like this, but I don't think you you, you didn't really turn up tonight. Um, and as for us, yeah, I think looking into this weekend, that's got to be a, you know, a result that we can push on and try and get six points um, from the week. I think that obviously a win tonight and a win on at the weekend is is what we should be looking to do now. Um, and obviously, hopefully this is the catalyst for us to push on. Obviously, the ball want top six for us and... Um, while a lot of us think that's an unrealistic target, you know, if we win on the weekend, we we should, you know, be there or thereabouts in the top six. So, yeah, good result for Blues. Um, disappointing for you guys, but overall, I think on the balance of play, it was a, it was a fair result. A one nil was was more than fair. Um, thanks for having me on, guys, and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Now, before I go back into divulge that game a little bit further, let's take a little look at what else went on in the championship. Uh, today on Tuesday. Uh, obviously, some games take place tomorrow. QPR took on Reading. It was a two. It's not a draw today. QPR took on Reading. It was a two-two draw. Sheffield Wednesday got back to winning ways with a one-nil win. Over Stork. Our next opponent's Preston. Uh, they got a one-one draw against Leeds. Swansea lost to Brentford. Clean sheet for David Raya. Millwall battle a two-two draw against Cardiff. And West Brom could manage. They only managed a two-two draw despite losing. For the majority of the game tomorrow, Forest take on Hull City derby against Wigan. Fulham against Luton. Bristol City against Charlton. And Huddersfield against Borah. Um, this is what the, currently the table looks like. We're sitting in 14th spot. Fortunately for us, it could have been, it could have been a lot worse with a lot of these teams drawing above us. Uh, but we could probably end up one, two, three, four. We could end up going down to 19th tomorrow if, if things don't work out. And our form book looks absolutely horrendous. Uh, next up for us, though, we do take on uh, Preston at Deep Dell. Uh, I'll be live on Twitch to watch that bad boy. Talk more about that in, in a minute. Uh, meanwhile, as for our opponents today, Birmingham, they all take on Luton back at St. Ains, St. Andrews once again. Also, on the weekend, it'll be Sheffield Wednesday against Leeds. That's the early kickoff over in Yorkshire. Uh, Middlesbrough against uh, Fulham as well later on in the day. West Brom, Charlton, Forest against Reading. Uh, Hull, Derby. Uh, Millwall against Stoke. We'll Huddersfield against Barnsley. Swansea against Cardiff. That's on Sunday. Same as Bristol City against Wigan. And on Monday, we have Monday Night Football. QPR against Brentford. That will be on Monday. And that... Uh, is pretty much it. Um, just a little talk to you about that Preston off end game. I hope, I hope, fingers crossed, I might have a special guest uh, talking about that Preston against Rovers on our own separate video. And uh, that is Ben HD, the championship guru. Uh, he's agreed, in principle, to come and, uh, and, and be the fan fan uh, for Preston off end. And we'll, we'll, we'll scrutinise him a little bit about that and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that should be popping up around about Friday, Thursday, Friday. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, me. Meanwhile, uh, what else have I got? I forgot to show you. Obviously, it's a double match day this week. We have the next round of championship predictions coming at you on Thursday. And then we'll have them back again on regular spot on Tuesday. The next round of Premier League predictions will be on Monday. And, of course, uh, and all those will be taking place on YouTube. And down the bottom there, there is the old Twitch watch along, which will take place on Saturday. And that will be Preston North End against Rovers. But, unfortunately, let's, let's, let's wrap up this, baby. Because this was... This was what is, uh, for a, want for a better word, an absolute travesty. Things aren't looking great right now. I, I don't, you know, like I said, we spent money, we spunked money up the wall on, on Sam Gallagher. We did not strengthen the defence whatsoever. We sold a pretty decent goalkeeper and brought in an expensive ass Loney who cannot flip in, uh, distribute the ball quickly, timely. Uh, timeliness is absolutely crucial at this level. He's been, he's been, he's been at the championship last season uh, with 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 Wigan. He should know the demands of this league. But um, but yeah, there's so many shortcomings with the Rovers at the moment that uh, but I'm starting to worry. And and, and I'm I'm not Mowbray out, even though I've expressed my opinions and I'm I would like to consider that. And the reason I'm not Mowbray out is because I just don't think one he'll get fired, uh, and two the 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 plate the replacements that could possibly come in are probably a very small shortlist. 
you know, I, I, there are a couple, I think there are a couple of Billy Bargains out there. I think Stendhal from Barnsley could come in, but is he the right man? Would he be the right man for this sort of stuff? But ultimately, Mowbray will remain, and he will remain in charge for the Deepdale game at, uh, or Preston game at Deepdale. And uh, hopefully, Holtby is not too serious, and he can come back, and he can bring some creativity with him and change things up a little bit. But ultimately, we need to start something. We need uh, we need to stop playing square pegs, round hole football. Elliot Bennett, if you're, if you're not a left back, you shouldn't be anywhere near the team. Unfortunately, you should be in the, on the bench. We've just got to start playing the right people in the right spots. Instead of trying to carry people, especially poor Bradley Dak. If we don't uh, turn this thing around, he's going to be off in January uh, for better things, whether in the top end of the championship or in the Premier League. He's got big dreams and he wants to do it with us. But right now, he's he's just been left at sea. Absolutely left at sea. Anyway, I'm going to be back tomorrow or very, very soon with, of course, the Preston game. We'll build up to that. Halloween special. I'm going to throw that at you. It's going to be a belter. So uh, make sure you come around for that bad boy. And, of course, don't forget Ben HD on Friday. Uh, we'll have some questions to throw at him. I've got a, quite a couple of little sneaky bad boys I'm going to throw at him. Um, anyway, uh, make sure you give this video some loving. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. New videos pretty much every single day. Big weekend this weekend. Halloween specials all over the place. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>